Good morning and welcome to Hello, Amy, are you there? Okay, um, let's see, and let's see, can Yelda, if you can, we had some technical difficulties. Yelda, if you can hear me, can you uh, let me know in the chat? I can hear you. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. All right, everyone. Um, hi, I'm Kathy Almy. We had um, Amy Julian, um, who was starting the, uh, the webinar. As soon as she clicked start, she got the blue screen of death on her computer. So that's what happened. So we had some, she'll be logging back in shortly. Uh, we'll get started on this, we're recording this. So this is not going to, um, this is gonna have a little bit of transitional math in it, but um, the focus of this webinar is going to be about technical math. All of it will be technical math. It'll just be a little bit of, about how that relates to transitional math. Um, my role is uh, obviously the um, director of transitional math, but I also have a part of my position um, relates to CTE and some work that I do for ICCB. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, some of the work that I've been doing with them, the things that we found, and then what we're going to be able to offer schools um, through ICCB's support uh, to help you improve your technical math course program, however you're doing it. We've got some great experts that we have available and that they're going to share a little bit about what they've been doing. But so you can, if you're looking for, hey, I want to improve my technical math course, it's not doing what I need, we've got people that can help you. All right, so let me go ahead and, and get started. So um, what I did was um, throughout the winter of uh, 2017 and 2018, I worked with Whitney Thompson at ICCB, and we uh, we determined how, what kind of survey we were going to do to talk to the community colleges, uh, the questions we were going to ask, how, who we were going to talk to, determine a representative survey. Um, in spring 2018, we developed the question list and tested it with Kankakee Community College because they had done so much with technical math, uh, with the transitional math, and also they're one of the few colleges in the state that has multiple levels of technical math. So this is something that they, they have more courses than a lot of people do, so we thought this would be great to get their feedback on um, the kind of questions that we need to ask and what information we need to get. So we uh, determined a representative sample of 15 colleges, and the idea was we wanted to get um, based, you know, people throughout the state different college size, and also how they do technical math. There are some schools that do standalone tech math courses, and there's some schools that don't offer that. Everything is embedded within another course or another program or um, another area outside the math department. Throughout April to August of last year, 
I interviewed uh, CTE administrators, math administrators, math faculty at 13 community colleges. We had a few colleges that didn't, uh, that weren't able to respond to requests, but we did get um, interviews with 13. So the, uh, the kinds of things that we were asking them were, uh, what's the content of your courses? Who teaches them? Where are they offered? Um, are they contextualized? How does the math department and the technical areas, how do they work together? How are people feeling about them, both the math department and the technical area? Are the employers satisfied? Are the students satisfied with them? Um, are you making connections to employers and universities? And what has been the impact of the PWR transitional math on your, on your program or your work or whatever's going on with your school related to technical math? Okay, so these are the colleges that we sampled. And some of you that are on the line, we talked to you and talked to your colleges, and I want to thank you so much for providing, you know, for being willing to be interviewed and providing this information because it's super helpful. So we talk to people throughout the state, all different sizes, and all different approaches to how technical math is done. Some very happy with their programs, and some not, and want to do something more with them and want to make some improvements. So this is the first thing um, that I found, and. And the, the main thing is with technical math, you're gonna hear me say this over and over again, it's not uniform. It's very, very, very diverse throughout the state. So I have come up with these designations and they're not an original. A lot of schools will, if they have multiple courses, we'll call them tech math one, two, and three. But I'm just calling them level one, two, and three. Uh, so when I, so I have some way to name them so you know what I'm talking about. But Everybody calls things differently, and there's there's no uniformity really in terms of these courses, their titles, or location, any of it. But level one, when I talk about that, is a course that is extremely similar to the transitional technical math course. It's uh, a very low level technical math, very numeric, lots of pre-algebra, a little bit of beginning algebra. Sometimes there's a little bit of trig in it, but it's um, and it's the most common course that's used. So it's, the, it's used for a lot of different programs. A level two course uh, feels more at the beginning algebra level with some intermediate algebra. It is not as common. A lot of schools, instead of having that, they'll just have their students take beginning or intermediate algebra. And a level three course, that does appear. We do have some of those. Level one's the most common, and I would say level three is probably the second. Um, level three is pr pretty much a pre-calculus course, college algebra and trig with a technical um, focus on it, okay? So, uh, but the most common course will be the level one, and these are just generalizations for what I'm gonna be talking to you about. All right, so there's lots of things we found in the survey. Okay, as I mentioned, lots of variability. Um, one of the things that we that kept a recurring theme was the, the health programs and then everything else. Um, because the health programs, that usually that's a very common program that are a lot of colleges, and it's a program of size. Um, a lot of these other programs are often small, and you might just have a handful of students that are in each one. Whereas in the health areas, you might have a decent sized number of students. And this is true, everything I'm saying to you is not, does not matter the size of the school. So it didn't matter if I was talking to a school of 20,000 or a school of 2,500. These, these things I'm mentioning about the size of these programs were true. So this is one place where the size of the college didn't make as much of a difference. It was the size of the program that affected things. And um, the health programs typically have a lot of students in them. So colleges are able to do really specialized things for their health programs. They're able to have their own courses, and like math for nursing or math for EMT or, or however they want to math for health careers because they have enough students to make a section, whereas all the other ones, they don't. And they might have 10 different areas, say welding and construction and, and manufacturing, all these different areas, and just a handful of students each one. It's not, um, it's cost prohibitive to try to make a specialized section of technical math for each of those area. So that's what something that the schools were running into commonly. Logistics were the main barrier that schools mentioned to things being, you know, more ideal and than they have in their current school. It certainly was not policy um, there, because there's not a lot of policy in this case. There's not a lot of things that are preventing schools from being innovative. It really is their own logistics and costs and do they have the students and the faculty and does it make sense to have um, specialized sections or how many sections can they offer. 
One thing I heard repeatedly, and I and I heard this, uh, and people were very happy about this. They felt like the PWR Act, with um, all of the you know, with a transitional map, and it does have a technical pathway in it, had been encouraging conversations just on technical math in general, not just um, transitional technical math, but how's technical math done in a community college. So I want you to keep in mind again when I was working on this survey and with all these findings, everything. All of this is with the colleges. This is not with the high schools. Um, not that it's not that high schools can't benefit from the things that we've found, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But this was about technical math at the colleges. Is it working or not? And how can we help improve it? Um, a recurring theme: students are taking their technical math at the end of their program. Then we come back to why is it required? Um, because this is not gen ed. This is not, this is not a gen ed approach to things. This is very different. This is what is the math that these students need for their program. It's not just what math would we like them to have in general for, you know, general mathematical literacy. That's not what this is about. This is what do they need for their program. And so students can get through their technical program and, and get through all the courses and, and not take their math to the end, then it begs the question of why is there a math requirement? And there isn't a math requirement on these programs um, just by nature of like an ICCB requirement. That is a local issue. Of, and so that's why there is so much diversity of how schools are doing. Um, they're taking care of the math component. Math matters in this, but you have a lot of flexibility in how you address it. Um, this was something that we that we heard that there are so many employers that are very much worried that they're not going to have enough students coming out of technical programs to be employed and we have so many baby boomers that are retiring so you're going to have this this hole where you it's not going to be easily filled so um, getting students competently prepared through these technical programs is so important um, other things this is a lot of returning adult students of the population we're looking at. These students are not necessarily here for a degree. Um, it's, a, it's a whole different approach than the typical completion. Um, you know, the goal is a degree. The goal is general education and broadening. That's not what we're talking about. These, a lot of times, are returning adults that are just trying to move up to a different pay grade at a current job that they already have, and so they're taking a few courses to do that. It's very different. Um, and so the goal is to serve those students' needs, which are not necessarily a certificate or a degree. That's not what they're driven by. It can be, but it's not always the case. Um, because you have so few people that teach technical math, it's usually just one person at a college, even a large college. The issue is, is you don't have 15 people that are affected by this um, and seeing a course that's not working. And so what happens is, there are people that are like, yeah, we're not happy with our course, but I'm the only person that's working on this. There's like me, not me, like the, the person I would talk to, they'd be like, I'm the only person that's working on this, and I'm the only person that's affected by it, so it's not really a priority because it's not something that widespread affects a lot of people. So that's one thing that was from stopping um, change from happening, which is why I'm excited to offer you um, two people who are math faculty who have done a tremendous amount of work with technical math, and they've done good work and really got into this space and learned a lot, and you will be able to benefit from their experience, um, especially if you're the only person at your school that's looking into this, and you're like, I need some help. Um, we've got some, some good people that can work with you. Um, contextualization tr helps, we know this, um, but this was continually mentioned by the people that we surveyed, that the courses, the lower level courses and the courses that are highly contextualized, the pass rates are higher. The, the courses that were very um, divorced from the technical context, they were very just, um, just theoretical, the, the motivation is lower for the students and the pass rates are lower. Um, we are seeing that there's more uh, four-year colleges and universities that are willing to partner on CTE programs, and part of this is due to the enrollment declines that we've had in the last couple of years. Everybody's looking for students, and so people are more willing to have discussions. How can we work together with two-year colleges to make this happen? Um, this, this did come up quite a bit that, you know, depends on who's working on this. Sometimes a math department 
has a different approach to technical math and a different mindset of what a technical math student needs compared to the technical areas and the employers. Sometimes there's a disconnect, sometimes there isn't, it just depends. But it's really important that whoever is working on this, if we do have math faculty working on this, that they are connected with the, um, the technical areas. So it's not about this gen ed mindset of what does everybody need to be, you know, this well-versed mathematically literate citizen, but it's what does the technical field, employer, whoever, student, what do they need? It's very different. Um, and a lot of times when the, the courses are completely done with math faculty in a math department, their expertise is math. It's not necessarily say construction. And so the contextualization sometimes is there, sometimes it's not, and sometimes it's more superficial. Um, the exciting thing about all this is because these courses are not IAI, which is a part of the problem because then you don't have the consistency, but it allows colleges to have tremendous control and flexibility on this. So if there's ideas that like if you start looking at this and you're thinking, hmm, I want to change some things or um, I'd really like to work with these faculty that Kathy's talking about, and maybe they can give us some ideas. There's probably not going to be a lot holding you back in terms of exterior um, or external issues to your college. It will more likely just be internally, buy-in, resources, things like that. Okay, so what were the best practices that we found? Highly contextualized content taught by technical instructors is the best, but not everybody is comfortable doing that or able to do that. So we'll look at that in a minute. But if you can have it taught by the people that do this for a living, that is going to have the most authenticity and often the best experience for students if the instructors are comfortable teaching math. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. We heard that, it really depends on the program. Um, if you could have a cohort and a well-defined pathway and it all laid out for students, that is ideal. <clears throat> and if you can team that up with an employer, <clears throat> Pardon me, that's even better. So um, the, the best programs that, the, that we saw over and over again were the ones that they were serving multiple needs. They were great for the student, they were great for the employer, and also the technical program and faculty at the college that everybody was getting their needs, that were getting their needs met. Um, one thing though that kept coming up is how important it is when you're looking at this that you have to be flexible because not all these programs work the same way. Like I said, help, you might have a lot of students say, you know, if it's construction, you might have five. If you have a different number of students, you're going to have to diversify how you approach getting them the content and instruction that they need in the way they need it, but also in a way that your college can manage and affordably. Um, Communication can never be overstated, and it had it was often an issue. Um, there was colleges where I was able to interview both someone from the math department and someone from the the technical areas, and you hear very different things. And the, where this, these programs are working the best are the places where there's a high level of communication, and they the college is recognizing. Yeah, we need the math people. If our technical areas are not comfortable teaching the math, we, were going, we need to work with our math people, but we have to work with our technical people as well, and we've got to make sure we're all on the same page. And what is the ultimate goal for these students and these employers? Um, when you can tie something to an internship or apprenticeship, of course, anyone that's in CTE that's on this call knows this. That is, that's the best that you can give. If you have a situation where a student can be taking classes, earning credit and potentially making money at the same time, that's just win-win all the way around. Um, if you're going to work with some kind of employer partnership, ICCB does require an advisory board, but I heard repeatedly that colleges were happy to have that requirement. They felt that was very beneficial um, and it may just it help that, that communication aspect. And so it was really, um, it was a good thing to have. Okay, so considerations that you need to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of schools, because they do have, you know, health and then all these other areas, they would take all those other areas and put them together and make like a generic tech math one, two, three, whatever. A lot of times just tech math one. And it was a catch-all course. And the idea is let's hit this content and show a variety of content. 
Well, the problem is, is it tends to serve no one. And if a student is in, say, culinary arts, and you're talking about welding, then they tune out. That's, that's what we heard often, because they're like, it doesn't apply to me, so why do I need to be learning this? We also saw that there were um, technical instructors that sometimes they were very comfortable teaching a lot of math because that's the norm of their area, especially when you're, let's say you're looking at like um, the engineering tech, we saw a lot of that, but certain areas, they were not. And so um, the idea of embedding a course uh, or embedding technical math content into a, con a technical area and having that instructor teach it, it really was teacher, de teacher dependent if that was gonna be possible or not. Um, you have to be careful too if you wanna embed. Embedding is great if you can embed the math into another area, but sometimes that increases credit hours. And then that became, that's a, one of those barriers that would come up um, that you might be um, bumping up against a credit hour limit. Um, we've talked about this, that those low enrollments in these courses, that's gonna challenge your creativity. Um, we did see a lot of students waiting to take courses. So uh, if we need to get, if technical math is necessary for them to be successful, then there needs to be something where they have to take it early on. Uh, then there's this whole issue of, is a student going to go to a four-year school or not? They may need a different pathway. Maybe you don't have them in uh, tech-specific courses. Maybe you put them in your intermediate algebra and your college algebra to give them the most number of options for transfer to a four-year school. So advising becomes an issue, and if you have students that are going to be possibly going to a four-year school, then you have to be really mindful of um, that are we being, you know, some of these tech courses, they might be too college-specific and not help a student transfer without having to take a lot of courses when they get there. And then also the issues of transitional math, how does it align? So um, looking at the attendees, a lot of you I recognize and you definitely, I know you're working with transitional math. I'm not gonna go into a bunch about transitional math. The main thing is um, within the Post-Secondary Workforce Readiness Act, we have these 12th grade transitional math courses and college or, or high schools get to pick which of the three pathways, they can pick more than one, but they have minimum requirement by ISB and ICCB, they have to implement a pathway. The technical math is a pathway that they can consider implementing. However, there are a lot of issues to keep in mind, and so that's what we're going to look at next. So uh, the, that most common technical math course that colleges offer is basically identical to the PWR transitional tech math course that provides some things to consider, okay? So the main thing that's come out of the last year when I've been working on this is that there are cases where a high school does not need to offer their transitional technical math, they can just offer technical math as dual credit if it's that level one course. If they have the faculty available, and often they do because dual credit qualifications for CTE is different than say like calculus, and so often they do have the faculty that can teach it, dual credit. So if that's possible, go for that. Now I did, I was just talking to a school yesterday, a high school that's like, well, we don't want to offer it dual credit even though we can um, because they're trying to figure out their different transitional, it, because here's the issue. If you decide that you're going to do uh, transitional technical math now as dual credit, it's no longer transitional, and then you have to pick up another transitional pathway. And depending on a school size, they may not, they may have already have other options where they've taken care of, and they may not have enough students or teachers to throw in another pathway. And I have had some schools where it's like, this was the transitional pathway that they were working on, and this is what they had the capacity to offer. And they don't want to offer it dual credit. They don't have to. So I wanna make that clear, because I may have been unclear at some point in one of my monthly updates, you can offer the transitional technical math as dual credit. It's no longer transitional then, but you can just offer it as dual credit in high school if you want to. You don't have to. But the, the idea is you can, and a student gets more for it if you do. Um, mean, and what do they get for it? What they get is with transitional courses, you get placement. With dual credit, you get placement and um, credit. And so that's offering a student more. <clears throat> if there's something to place into, and if there's something, if there's somewhere to go with it. So the other issue that keeps coming up with um, transitional technical math is 
it doesn't always align with each college's technical math approach. So if you've got a college that only has one tech math course and it's the lowest one and your high school's like, or you have a high school that's going to do transitional technical math and the student gets this placement, what do they get placement into or out of? They might, they might not. It depends on how your program is set up. So it becomes, um, it's very localized then and it very much, I try to encourage high schools, if you're looking at the technical transitional math pathway, you've got to be talking to your college to see if that makes sense. Because what we do not want to have happen is a student get this placement and they don't have anything to use it for. They're not placing out of anything or into anything. Um, they haven't removed any requirement. Hopefully they have, but we don't want them doing it if they're, if they're not removing a requirement. Um, we want them to be able to take advantage of their placement. So here is the main point. Transitional technical math is absolutely something that's still on the table, but it isn't going to be universal that everyone is, that all high schools are going to be using that. It's not the most popular pathway anyway that high schools are considering, but a high school that's looking at it does need to consider would dual credit make more sense for their students? Would it get them more? Um, and then if that's the case, then they just need to look at a different technical or transitional math pathway. All right, so here are the recommendations, and I've, I've written up a report that I've submitted to ICCB about all of this. So this is just basically the summary of it, um, but the, that's the, these recommendations have been um, documented as well. So students should only be required to take what they need and when they need it. So and um, the idea of just taking extra algebra for algebra's sake, that is not the approach in CTE. The idea is we're trying to give these students what they need for what they are doing at the time, um, which is if they are planning on transferring four years, that's different. Um, then they probably do need extra algebra. But if they're just doing this as like to work on a certificate or a two-year degree at the college, an AAS degree, or they're just taking a couple classes to advance in their, um, in their current job, then we need to be giving them what they need and just that. One thing that came up that schools were finding as a great, unique solution was variable credit. I saw this several times. I thought this was awesome. You know, sometimes if they have a certain course, it might be two, they might have a two credit version for this particular program and a one credit version for this program. You know, they were, they might have like a tech math on the books, but they have all different kinds of versions in terms of the focus of the content, number of credit hours, there was ways that they were able to play with it a little bit. Um, and as I mentioned this, if you have students who are gonna go the four-year way, they should be directed towards 1.1 transferable offerings as opposed to 1.2 under the ICCB numbering 1.2 technical offerings. Um, it would be ideal if we had a standardized approach to technical, technical math offerings across the state. I do not foresee that happening. It was a recommendation I made, but there's no policy changes coming with that. Um, but that's not to say that colleges can't talk about these things. There's the chief academic officers. They meet together. There's college math faculty meet together. CTE groups meet. This is definitely something that if someone wanted to start having a conversation and bring people together on, you certainly could if this was a need. I don't know if that'll happen. I think a lot of people want to personalize their technical approach to their local students, employers, programs, um, and they don't necessarily want to do something universal. So I don't know if there would be the desire to do that. Um, if you can embed content, math content, into a technical area and have it taught by the instructor in that field, you're going to have the most buy-in from students and authenticity. But that requires people that are comfortable with teaching math. Like I said, that varies. Um, but contextualization, what I heard often was there are people are like, well, we say we're contextualized, but we know we're not really. It's still pretty much canned problems. It's not true authenticity. So I'm gonna be turning it over shortly to um, our faculty that are, are gonna serve as resources and they can speak more to what did they do with contextualization. Um, connect to employer if at all possible. Um, we talked about this, um, having technical instructors teach the courses, communicating highly. This was something I thought was interesting. There were ways for some colleges, they had ways of making their catch-all tech math courses when they had to put like a whole bunch of fields into one course. 
uh, for, you know, enrollment and just capacity reasons, they, they found ways to make it more specialized. So one thing was Lewis and Clark Community College, they do specific projects. So you might have this catch-all tech math course, but then there's a project, like if you're in construction, you're in welding, whatever, there was a project you were going to do specific related technical math concepts to your field. I thought that was fantastic. And then um, Illinois Eastern Community Colleges, they what they would do is they have these sometimes these specialized sections. So they have this tech math that's on the book, but they have various versions of it they offer for different areas. So if those are things that you're interested in, I would consider reaching out to Lewis and Clark or IECC uh, for more specifics on what they do with that. You could create um, a one hour block or add on little chunks um, that you can tack on um, with technical math. Instead of having like a three hour course, you could have chunks that you basically are like modularizing it. And so some programs might have three of those chunks, some might have two, some might have one. That gives you some flexibility as well. Now, scheduling and staffing one hour blocks can be challenging. So there's downsides to that, but it can also make it a little bit easier to provide students and programs just the amount they need without going over your credit hour limit. Um, you could have the tech teachers teaching the, those blocks that they're comfortable with, and you could have the math teachers teaching the other ones. So there's ways to make that work. You could have tech teachers and math teachers team teaching. Sometimes that's logistically hard to do, but if you can do that, that's also a really awesome way to go. Um, and this is a biggie. You've got to make sure that you're aligning your transitional and your technical math offerings. That's really important. Very, you know, that's just like a nice bullet point, but it's, it's a big one. It's important to, to do that. So if you were a college and you've got any high schools that have mentioned that they want to work on uh, transitional technical math, please talk to them and make sure they understand for the students, like what programs those students are going into, what's the math required, and will the transitional technical math give them placement into or out of something that will benefit them. All right. So ICCB has generously provided funding to contract. We have two community college math faculty and they're gonna speak next on what each of them is gonna talk about the things that they've been working on at um, their colleges. So Yelda um, is currently at Harper College, but she also uh, worked at Parkland College. And then Melissa is at Kankakee Community College. And they're each going to speak to what they're doing. I'll turn it over to them in just a minute. But before I do, what I wanna to explain to you is the plan going forward is that after this, if you're like, we want to do something with our technical math. We're not quite sure yet, but I want you to go back and have a conversation and talk to people and figure out what do you want to do. Um, and it can just be broadly, like maybe it's just we want to improve our technical math course and make it more contextualized or we want to have better alignment between the technical math and the technical areas in the math department, whatever it is. What we want you to do, um, email either Whitney or me, or you can actually just send it to both of us. And if you're a college, write a short paragraph, not, I mean, literally a few sentences, just give us an idea of what is it that you want help with. Um, so that will help us figure out who to send to you to work with, either Yelda or Melissa, because we want to, um, you know, make sure we're using both of their talents and getting them lined up with colleges. In terms of this application, this quote unquote application, this is just a few paragraphs. There's nothing fancy. Shoot me an email and, and Whitney and, and please send it by June 3rd. So you've got a couple of weeks and I know that you're at the end of your semester. Um, so, you know, just, just generically, you know, think what would you want to work on? Um, send us an email and then we will get you paired up with Yelda or Melissa. And the ICCB is providing the funding to them. They are going to be able to provide support to you. So you're not paying for their time. ICCB is, is doing that, which is awesome. But we don't have them forever, so we need to take advantage of their talents. So they are able to work through September 30th. So the idea is we want you to go back, talk to the people you need to at your school, send us an email and, and express your interest. We will get you paired up so that you can start having conversations with Yelda or Melissa. And this can be, you can do a Zoom call, you can do a regular call. If Now, if you're not too far from them, potentially a face-to-face -face visit, but let's say you're at the other end of the state 
well, you know, that's the beauty of communication and technology. You can do this virtually, but you, you know, they can help look at documents with you, your program, talk to people and um, just get the process started in having a conversation and figuring out how can they help you and dive into the nitty gritty because that's what they're, they, they're comfortable doing that and they have experience with it. All right. So I'm going to first turn it over to Melissa and unmute her. And Melissa, feel free, go ahead and talk about the things you've worked on. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Um, basically, uh, this report that, uh, that, Kathy wrote from the survey's finding um, could be just describing us. We were very unhappy with our um, tech math design. We had a high failure rate um, of the second level of math. And then when the transition math came into play, that gave us a lot of motivation to re-examine um, what we are actually doing. So we have three levels of tech math. Tech Math 1, Tech Math 2, Tech Math 3. Everybody takes 1 and 2. Um, only of the electrical program needing a little bit higher math takes Tech Math 3. But if they didn't test at a certain level, they could conceivably have to take an arithmetic class before they took any Tech Math courses. So if someone needed that Tech Math 3, they were looking at four math courses. And for students who don't really enjoy mathematics to begin with, this was just too much. So the first thing we did was we removed all the arithmet uh, arithmetic prerequisites from the first level of Tech Math course. And um, we realized that we were going over those concepts again um, in the first level course, so there was no reason for them to complete a separate course before they even um, uh, attempt the first level. The second level of math, uh, technical math, was focusing on intermediate algebra concepts like factoring. Um, and we all know that welders or automotive technicians or anything like that are probably never going to factor a polynomial. So um, we are um, eliminating the second level. Um, the, the only thing that's in our second level that was not in our first was the right triangle trig, so we do have to keep that. And then our second level is now going to be redesigned for the electrical um, programs with a focus on trig and eliminated the third level altogether. Um, we are decreasing, of course, our emphasis on contextualized problems. Um, our technical program is basically, you know, have the contrived word problems at the end of the chapter, and that just doesn't cut it. Um, increasing our emphasis on, on estimation, mental math, measurement. And then the biggest thing that is really uh, working well at this moment is we're developing lessons in conjunction with technical instructors. So the entire second level that's been redesigned for the for the electrical and electronic programs, it is going to be taught by a math teacher, but it has been developed, every lesson has been developed in conjunction with the electrical program director and faculty. We are about to finish that course in the next actually two or three weeks. There are no naked, number examples in that course. Everything is within context. Um, so we're really excited about that. All of these changes have been going on in the last few months. So actually our courses are not even, are not um, eligible to be taught until fall of 20. But um, we're really excited about that second course. So as soon as I finish the second course in the next few weeks, the focus will then be on the first course to develop those in conjunction with the technical instructors. And that was a little bit more challenging because it is going to be a catch-all course. But uh, we feel confident that we can do things um, in the area of group work, um, modules, projects, um, to focus in on the program areas that the students are studying. So at this point, you know, we are okay with having a class working on different things. And um, that takes a little bit different pedagogy to try to establish, but um, that is our goal for that course as well. Um, the hardest thing, I think, for this entire redesign is 
or was to establish the level of trust that the math faculty needed with the tech faculty. Um, I think over the years with all of these courses and the disconnect between math faculty and technical fac faculty, they just kind of lost faith in us. And so I am the only person working on this at KCC and trying to establish that level of trust took a lot of work, took a lot of conversations, a lot of emails, a lot of face-to-face -face conversations, a lot of um, talking with advising, a lot of talking with the um, associate dean. And um, I gained the faith from the health careers department first with some courses that I designed for them. And then they gave uh, me a so-called good reference <laughs> to some of the other programs. So that I think has been our hardest uphill battle. But um, we are going to be offering the technical math one as a dual credit with our high schools. We actually already have um, some MOUs uh, signed as well to do that. But we are going to plan to incorporate the sample lessons that are going to be available in June from the Transitional Math website into our Tech Math One. Um, and that will kind of be a jumping start for me to start talking to the um, program directors for the uh, other areas. Um, I think the biggest thing that is different for us, besides the fact that, you know, we're kind of redesigning just the, the course levels, is the fact that we are designing everything in close content close contact with the technical faculty. And sometimes it's a challenge to um, actually schedule, but I can't, you know, I can't express enough what the importance of that is. And then the other thing that I would advise as you move forward with this is if you do redesign your courses, um, with a focus on a little bit decreased of algebra is like Kathy said, we still have to worry about those students who are going to be going to the four year um, schools. The advising piece is critical because they need to get, if they, if they know coming in that they want to do a four year degree, we need to make sure that advising understands the difference between a student who is only getting a two year degree versus someone who is wanting to go on to a four-year degree. So advising is also a critical piece here. But um, we're excited about our changes. Like I said, the courses will not be taught until fall of 20 because of the, um, the curriculum guidelines that we have. But um, everything is being developed within um, collaboration with um, you know, uh, technical faculty and I just think, you know, we're open to flexibility. What doesn't work the first semester will redesign for the second semester. And after I've built that, um, that level of trust, which is so important for the foundation, I think, I think we're on the right path moving forward. I think that's pretty much all I have, Kathy. Hello, can everyone hear me? Awesome, I think I'm on meeting right now. Uh, my name is Yael Dayden Mullen. As Kathy introduced me earlier, I worked in uh, Parkland Community College and I have redesigned their uh, technical math course uh, specifically geared through, uh, towards their automotive uh, uh, students. And they also had a catch-all a course as well. Uh, technical math courses was offered in level one and level two. Uh, we didn't have a level three in Parkland, uh, but the numbers were dwindling in level two and it hasn't been offered for several years in a row. And uh, level one was the one that I have been approached to 
develop. And I can say, I can definitely second what um, Melissa mentioned earlier that there, at the beginning, it was a really hard battle to get the technical faculty and also the math faculty on board to start the partnership and actually getting the talk started. So that was my step one, really. I established a strong partnership. I visited their courses. I had quite a few talks with the technical math, math faculty, their deans, my dean, and everyone involved that are stakeholders in this. Uh, we uh, wanted to have a little bit of a test case. I, want, I personally wanted to design this as a test case of one having highly contextualized course for automotive students and another one a non-contextualized catch-all sort of course for everyone else to see how much of an impact is in there between the two. So it really worked well for me from the statistical point of view as well. So I um, changed the design of the course from the beginning. Uh, what Kathy was touching earlier, the students didn't see this course as a part of their curriculum. They had seen it as something that they have to get it done, get it over with in the last semester, and then everything will be, um, I mean, they can go and work. I wanted to change that view with the students' minds and also, I mean, uh, the technical faculty mind as well. So I offered my courses in the shops itself. I, I literally taught in the middle of an um, automotive shop. Uh, the technical shop. And so that started really the conversation that this course is actually part of the whole math, uh, part of the whole curriculum that they have to see. Uh, and one thing I put all of the technical faculty together in one room and I said, I cannot make all everyone happy. What is that one thing if you want me to make sure that the students are walking away from my course? What is the one thing that you want? And they said, number sense. We really don't care that they know any algebra, polynomial, or anything, but we would like them to walk off with a strength in number sense. So if you can uh, offer that, if you can strengthen that part, that will be awesome. So I definitely included a lot of estimation, and I actually, um, for a certain part of the course, banned the regular calculators. I used a certain type of calculator that allowed estimation. It doesn't give any answers unless you estimate uh, things, and also mental math activities. So it helps throughout the whole course in a certain embedded way to strengthen their minds and in, in that regard. Um, I did contextualize the course content with the help of the uh, automotive faculty. So I visited all their measuring labs that they had to understand what kind of measuring tools that they're using. And they really, I paired them up with the content material, like micrometers I use for decimals and also for uh, conversion. I have also activities that related, I don't know, we used Ohm's law, we had a certain, we used their lab material to test on it or have some virtual labs that I uh, built for them to use or to kind of get familiarized with the uh, concept and such. And I really, throughout the whole, I really uh, put everyone, all the stakeholders in one room. I had kept the conversation really strongly going on with the math faculty, technical faculty. I asked technical faculty feedback from their community partners, the employees, what kind of feedback that they would like to get, uh, that they give, that we should include, that they see not, they are not um, really seeing in their prospective employees and they can really help us to build that kind of content into my content itself. So it really worked out well at the end of the whole trip. I mean, I will say that the students were a lot more engaged. I was part of the team. That is how they visualize the class. And uh, I cannot say the same thing for my one catch-all class. Now I have transitioned after uh, three years of teaching this course. I transitioned to Harper. Um, it has been, this is my second year, so I am working on, uh, we only have a level one uh, tech math class here. I'm working on actually redesigning level one math myself but I have to sort of take quite a few things that Kathy brought up in consideration, like um, uh, dual credit, transitional math, how those things will play out. So it is work in progress so far. And that's all I can, I think I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have say, to say in the, um, on the matter because both Kathy and Melissa covered most of what I wanted to say and I don't wanna rehash things. Thank you. <laughs>